Good day and welcome to the Tech Central podcast. My name is Daniel Robus and I'll be your host today. And uncharacteristically, I do not have a cup of coffee because it's midday and I've had about 13 cups that were sponsored by various people so that I don't shake while I'm interviewing PJ, who's joining us from Sage. PJ Bishop is the VP for services for Sage Africa and Middle East. Thank you for joining us this morning, PJ. Thank you for having me, Daniel. Good to what be here. What does PJ stand for? It's Peter John. It's an Irish tradition to have your father and grandfather's names all added together. So it's all one name. Oh, that is awesome to know. That's a nice background to know. And I take it you've got a touch for the whiskey then as well from an Irish perspective? Or Most definitely the whiskey and beer. Anything that you can actually distill or brew. That's <laughs> awesome. Including coffee, by the way. Oh, really? Okay. Our next cup is going to be sponsored by you. Now, unfortunately, yeah. our audience members, PJ's office used to be a brewery and has now been converted into an office. You don't look like you're in mourning because... Of no, because the surrounds here are reminiscent of the brewery and some lovely multi holix like smells that I still get now and then when I do my recipes on weekends. So not missing it because it's still around me. In, in oh, a, in that, is, that is <laughs> so cool. You know, having a home brewery and home business talks to Sage in the heart of Sage. And what I really enjoy is the positive messages that have been coming out. And if you've been following the series that I've been interviewing the Sage execs, you'll see that PJ is exactly like cut from the same cloth as the rest of the Sage management. And before we dive in and we start talking about the resurgence of business and new business, I got an interesting couple of reports from Sage and the majority of small businesses that were interviewed saying that they are continuing to trade after the pandemic and more than half expect to be as profitable or more profitable than before. And I see this as really an opportunity for organizations to reimagine their future and to take a real step forward. And PJ Sage is helping organizations from the small to medium size just use modern applications. And why did we change the topic from cloud applications into back to basics of business for this session? If you look at what's happened with COVID as the catalyst for everyone to jump onto the cloud bandwagon, all of a sudden, one Thursday morning, everyone was in lockdown, <laughs> level five. I just managed to get back from Florida at the time on the Wednesday evening, and Thursday it was closed, and businesses had to actually find a new way of doing business, so continuity and ensuring that they can keep the lights on. So a lot of businesses understood the need to have the infrastructure to be yeah. able to work anywhere, anytime on any device, and Sage has had this technology for a while. It's mm. just now that businesses can actually see in practice how valuable it is to them. So end-to-end -end businesses, back to basics, let the entrepreneur focus on, my example, brewing or distilling yeah. while the accounting happens in the background and the payments and so forth. You know, I heard from one of your colleagues, invisible accounting as baked into the Sage mandate. And you seem to be focusing on saving 20 minutes in our business day every day. Where do we go? Is that automation and standardized processing baked into Sage? Did you have to work a long way to get there? And how has it matured? So how technology has been built and we've created application programming interfaces, APIs. We're our third party independent software vendors that aren't in a Sage house mm -hmm. actually team up with us in collaboration to integrate through these business layers mm -hmm. to ensure they're always on the right update, that there's no maintenance or no IT infrastructure mm -hmm. needed to actually upgrade. A few examples would be Receipt Bank or any other integrations where an individual would typically take a photo of a slip. It would automatically start learning that this slip at a specific coffee shop would go to this journal as a business expense. So this would all happen in the background. It has taken a while to ensure that we've got yeah. an actual marketplace to ensure that these products are available. Yeah. And we have a program for independent software vendors to link up with Sage to create these integrations and automations mm. and these plugins to mm. add value to the entrepreneur who wants to carry on with his business and do as little as possible with on regards the to the accounting yeah. side. And hence yeah. the invisible accounting, it happens in the background. 
Wow. And we can also take it one step further to invisible banking, where you actually would want to do your payments and receipts, or you're paying employees, paying suppliers, all through AI and machine learning to understand the actual infrastructure actually starts understanding your business and understands where these payments should go without having to log out of one system, log into your banking, create payments. So all of this is happening all at once. So we are plugging security holes by making it seamless and going through the business transaction. Are you seeing that people are now looking transactional wide and forgetting about the boundaries of their system? Or are we still compartmentalizing businesses into I'm doing finance and then I'm doing inventory and then I'm dealing with the customer? So I definitely can see that entrepreneurs can have time to focus on their core activities Hmm. and around business, for example, recruiting new individual skills into the business. These entrepreneurs who would want to be part of those functions can actually provide the time and create capacity to be able to be part of those engagements that previously you trust an HR function or a Hmm. finance function to Hmm. do. So Hmm. most definitely broader and also being able to understand specialities in your business, reporting, making decisions based on business intelligence that is provided Hmm. from systems, which previously wasn't there. And you'd typically be stuck in a situation where you'd be fully dependent on other individuals to actually provide this information, your accountant and so forth, and still actually making use of your accountant Hmm. if you concentrate on your core activities for your accountant to automate these processes Hmm. for you. So it's giving me the comfort that the foundational data is there, but I can get a snapshot and I can trust people to do their jobs because the system's looking after it. Can we circle all the way back into Sage's core area? A couple of years ago, the biggest thing was we would make new releases on an annual basis or a biannual basis, and then it was terrifying. And we had to go and upgrade these systems. How has this changed now if I'm in a cloud environment, if I'm on a subscription basis? So firstly, the updates are really seamless in terms of there is no IT individual who has to send out information to say, we'll be offline on this date from this time to that time. It'll actually happen in the environment. So everyone stays on the latest release and in the very next day when they log in, they have the latest release with all the latest statutory compliant items, mm. whether it's in payroll or accounting. And to businesses who aren't stressing about which is the best time of the year to actually have downtime to do an upgrade. Obviously, from an infrastructure perspective, as the systems grow bigger and more complicated, mm. your resources, your tin or your servers would have to be increased. And now it doesn't exist anymore. It's Sage's problem and more than happy to provide that service in terms of cloud service to our customers so that we can lessen that burden of the IT infrastructure and the costs that are associated to it. So you upgrading automatically and I just get taken along there. Do you have a calendar? Can I access when that's happening so I can have a nervous breakdown on my own or does it just happen? Surprise! So what you can expect and what you will see is typically like if I can compare it to an app store on your phone, you typically have either an automatic update or you could actually plan when the update would actually happen. Everyone would experience the same updates over a period of time. And we have roadmaps that are available to all our customers in terms of what features are going to be released or if there's statutory or compliance items that need to be added, when they will be added and when they can expect when they open up one morning, it will be there on X date. Awesome. Is there a lot of your base that's still working on the old on-prem environment or have you seen a massive uptake of subscription? So Sage being the biggest provider of payroll and accounting products in the small and medium segment in Africa and the Middle East region, we've seen a huge, huge uptake in Sage Business Cloud accounting and payroll. However, it means that we've got a huge opportunity for our business partners and our accountants to migrate these customers from desktop products into cloud products and obviously focus on their services, which is also transformed during this period where the services wouldn't be what you say in terms of loading a a manual update or going Mm. in and booking Mm. time out. Mm. You'd actually use accountants for business intelligence and more speciality type Mm. services instead Mm. of your mundane IT services. 
our discussion is back to basics of business and utilizing new technology for that. But for the Luddites like me who want to stay and want to own their environment, is there extended support for these guys? Are we still looking after the mom and pop who don't want to migrate or are they cast to the wind, kicked aside like some of the rugby teams on the weekend? We won't mention any of them. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's another story about back oh. to basics, but um, we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> if, if, if you look at your owner-managed or owner-family-owned businesses that are entrepreneurs, typically when they move from a desktop product into a cloud product, we provide them do it yourself or do it with you or allow an accountant to assist you with those specific items. And the beauty of it is, as an individual, if you just want to do invoicing or if you just want to look at reports, your accountant can provide that information to you and have it available. So in both, there's the benefits of both worlds. You have your own instance or your own login, or you can have your accountant have a shared login with you and you do a little bit and the accountant does some and then or in a situation where your accountant can continue with all your transactions and provide mm. you your annual reports mm. awesome and so we're saying that those people who want to stay on prem they can stay on prem they're just not going to get some of the innate benefits that we're getting from the subscription cloud products that you've got at the moment so, so the benefits of moving to the cloud far outway staying on a no, I, I get that i get that and we're going to dive into some of those because they but the guy who doesn't want to move he doesn't have to move he doesn't it, have to move i do think though that we'll have to coax them into understanding the benefits and i know we're going yeah, to get into it now but yeah. i think so if you want to stay on a desktop product we still support those products however i think if you look at it's the same as me maybe saying the people who used to use a dvd player you can stay on a DVD player, but eventually you're going to move to Netflix. So yeah, yeah. It, no, I get it. I, get, there. I yeah. get it. Just reassuring for some of the people who are listening who are never going to move. It's like, okay, we're happy with that. But and you're okay there. The biggest thing that I've seen in the change in the application workspace is this almost this the cell is mobile working. And we can access on the mobile and we can authorize payments and we can do things on the mobile. And Sage is well geared to that. But are you seeing actually people working on phones versus a mobile laptop like I'm talking to you now? Is the phone actually a big benefit to someone or are we overselling that out, not you, but outside? So as an example, within our own workspace, if I want to book a seat at our offices, through our ELP system to ensure and our payroll system to have a look at our time and attendance, I will go into my mobile phone and book a seat on workspace. I'll also approve any payments through an app on my phone. So it's definitely not oversold and it's definitely the first item that I reach for when I need something at short notice. I rarely log onto my laptop unless I want to actually work on a spreadsheet or do some of the old archaic tasks that I'm used to doing. Yeah. But if you look at the younger generation, they grab their phones and they physically process items. Yeah. That is amazing. PJ, that's really an interesting perspective. I saw it as just an approve yes, no, and move on. You know, when we are talking about this modernization journey that customers are going through, cloud is often bandied about, and it's usually under digital transformations banner. Is this a financial decision or is it a technical decision for a customer? Where does it play in your mind? If you asked me this two years ago, I would have said it's a technical decision. Okay. Today, it's in the business risk part of the business in terms of continuity and ensuring the business can wade through the difficult times of not having staff wherever they need to be at whatever time and enable your colleagues to be able to work on a device if it is at all possible. And in many work environments today, where someone would be on a screen or a tablet, all of our products can actually accommodate that. Okay. So it's quite exciting to see how the business and the risk continuity teams are so involved in discussions now during yeah. a sale where it was yeah. previously either the financial director or the CIO. Yeah, that is. Tell me about a customer experience that changed your way of working with clients, especially during this journey over the last year of work from anyway. So I can mention a large retailer mm. who typically was on a desktop payroll system. 
and this retailer eventually realized that they actually can't go into where they need to go to. They've got shortened work hours. They need to enable their staff to be able to do items outside of just the retail environment from warehousing and so forth. And what was quite interesting is these different needs that popped up. So one need was that everyone can check in and say that they're safe. Wow. Um, so that's a small, tiny thing where you have an application that sends through a workflow to say, or, or you have a notification that sends through a workflow to say, are you okay? You click on yes, and it can do a roll call almost immediately and understand where the individual is. And they also have areas where an employee can actually give access to say, you can follow my location or on specific times of the day, you can understand where we are so you can minimize or mitigate the risk of that individual being in any danger without even having to open your mouth or log into anywhere or clock in for work. And on top of the Gauteng and KZN riots, we've seen that this has also been quite effective in terms of understanding where your staff are and how they can log in and even to log a leave transaction or a yeah. claim for whatever they need. Yeah. They can do it through their mobile phones or through the URL on their laptops or a tablet. Wow. Wow. And now this is not taking away from the fact we still have to do manual entry, or is that also something you're working away? Is that also disappearing? So manual entry is actually becoming more and more of a thing of the past. I use the receipt bank example, and I think yeah. that's extremely important to understand that individuals and salesmen and people who need to accumulate these items that are all over the place. Yes, you still get a bill or a receipt and you can scan it. Now you'll see that you've got SnapScan. SnapScan creates and generates a report every month that goes into your accounting system. So that almost eliminates. So you've automated the capturing of the actual slip to actually take your report from another system that's one up from that and actually get it into your accounting system. Also with regards to scanners in terms of stock taking, and there are scanners that can actually, like in the men in black, hold up a stick and go, look at this, boom. It physically will understand exactly where each item is in your warehouse, as well as how many units there are of them. And then you get further, more advanced independent software vendors who actually have smart shelves and smart conveyors that actually understand how full these boxes are. If there's wow. been shrinkage, if it's a liquid, if it's been evaporated, yeah. it would understand the total landed cost at the end. And they, there's no transactions there. There's no input or data or anything being punched in. So we're talking about edge computing and IoT integrated into our core ERP system. And there's live sites that are using this today. In our segment, we're talking about small to medium. This is not just for these mega big brands and big companies. We can do this. Correct. And what's very exciting is everyone thinks that these massive companies who invest in the enterprise space and a huge amount of buying data and so forth, yeah. we have that data available to learn lessons from. As an example, if there's a transaction that 99% of all users post to a specific general ledger account through a journal, yeah. no one has to think about it. It's there. And there's a thousands and thousands of these transactions coming through. Instead of one big organization, think of many thousands or hundreds of thousands Most of small the beehive. organizations. The, yes. the beehive, kind of, we're all building and we're all doing the same thing. And Sage, now on the cloud environment, we can learn lessons together and everybody benefits from that. Sounding a little bit like you're a cult there, but that's okay, <laughs> BJ, that's okay. But I mean, we still have to make the decisions. I mean, we've got to decide, are we going to buy this or we're not going to buy this? Are we going to accept that customer? We're not going to accept. Business decisions still need to be made. You spoke a lot earlier about the access to data. What does it mean for me as a small to medium 50-person engineering firm that's running? How can you help me with decision-making from a perspective of technology? So engineering companies, you typically would want to understand what your spot price would be for your exchange rate for buying steel at the moment. It's, I think, quadrupled since the beginning of COVID. That can be monitored through your ERP. Your total landed cost can be calculated. You get the steel in at X cost, and then you ship it off to wherever it needs to go within Africa or wherever your customer is. Hmm. You'd actually be able to have total landed costs there. 
You'd also be able to ensure that the engineers, from a project management perspective, project costing, would all be able to invoice those specific costs, job costing in terms of individual engineers, specific skills and multiple mm. sites with multiple activities. The list goes on. Mm. But I think mm. to ask your question, from a decision-making perspective, at the end of the day, all these things are functioning to ensure that you're accumulating this data. This data mm. is collated into dashboards and reports or business intelligence reports for the individuals who are actually sitting there to actually understand. So the term flying blind has been better understood now and understanding mm. that in the 60s, mm. 70s and 80s, how mm. these big firms just popped up and a lot of it was a guessing game and was risk. Mm. Now you've mitigated all that risk by having live data available on your smartwatch, on your phone. There was a power app written by one of our business partners. And the vendor basically said, oh, well, if it's only a small graph you need, why don't you put it on that Apple Watch you're wearing? And all it does is indicates forecast to revenue. And the guy looks at it all day to see if it's- No ways. So, and we couldn't do that happen. before with on-prem. The tech just wasn't there. It would no. have been a massive exercise to get that going. It would have been a massive exercise and now it's readily available. Wow. If you had a billboard that was running over William Nickel, my favorite road in the world, what would it say and why? I would say understand that cloud is here and focus on your core activities and let Sage look after all the peripherals around it. But that's not billboard talk. And I'm not a billboard consultant. No, so that was good. I'll give, <laughs> I will give you five points for giving it a go. That was really, really good. I'm going to ask you another tough question. How would you explain to your mom's friends what you actually do for Sage? Well, it's a very interesting question because I, I heard my dad actually trying to explain to our next door neighbor that what I do every day, I sit and broadcast meetings and I work at night. So to explain to my mom's friends over a cup of tea, pretty much I how their pension funds come in on the electronic cards that they have. And I must say, if you look at the older generation, my mom started using digital banking or online banking since COVID started using the 6060 app and the app for Woolworths and pick and pay delivery. So they've become more with it. Yeah. So I would explain yeah. to them that all of that is what I ensure that all these shops and retailers and that have a back end system that can make it happen. Uh, that's um, awesome. That's awesome. And we're moving businesses now from an application world where it was on prem into this connected world, which is allowing for data to come through from multiple sources. What's the next step for? these businesses that have walked the journey with you, where do they go to from here on this cloud journey? So the benefits that businesses have already realized and are continuing to realize is the compound effect of additional data coming in through this ecosystem. It makes machine learning and AI, it makes the actual applications smarter and smarter. So through the nature of, or the virtue of, of you using the system every day in this ecosystem, you become a smart business and you start understanding better and you actually put a face to your customers. You understand the data of where, what goes and you start actually splitting hairs in terms of laser focusing on your market, on your customers and specifically where you actually want to play. And then also with regards to future investments and so forth, this ecosystem is across the world. So Sage isn't only in the African Middle East region, it is all over. It's a global company. And this information in Sage Business Cloud accumulates. And I think just to add that the next item is invisible banking. Is said what that, we yes. also call a service fabric where specific services and payments can be made in this cloud fabric that's governed with all the international standards of banking and privacy and GDPR and Papier. So that's the next step. And I might be a bit blunt in saying that that's here now and mm. that the next mm. step that was being planned has been moved up and shifted right into the space where we're playing at the moment. So you've actually outmaneuvered yourself, out-innovated yourself that this is coming in. PJ, it sounds like you guys are in for a really exciting time. We're coming to the end of the year. 
And I'd like to know, what are you most excited about that's going to be released in the next six months from the Sage stable? There are multiple things. One is our new independent software vendors through an enterprise okay. development program where Sage has funded a lot of these developing companies and to watch what they bring up, new funky technology, third parties that we haven't even thought of that they have thought of and found a gap to actually integrate into our system. So creating oh. an additional value to our core systems. And then our accounting alliances that we've got with specific SICA and CIPA, and as well as with the CA 2025 program aligning at the end of this year, our product to ensure that we get to that. So I think those are a few of, wow. few of many that I can think of now, but those wow. are the super exciting ones that I'm happy to see roll out. PJ, you do have a job that you do at night sometimes. What is your focus and where you're taking your team for the next 12 weeks? What is your core focus and activities? The core focus from a services side is customer core in terms of understanding exactly what our customers need. I am looking forward to understanding how we can enable our business partners to support our customers at a world-class level to provide our accountants with the tool set and mindset of understanding what it is to actually provide world-class support and then to retain our superstar customers and get new customer acquisitions, new logos, and continue to provide South Africa software as a service and ensure that we reach our vision of becoming the best SaaS company on the planet. Wow, that is awesome. For those customers who are on the fence, actually not even on the fence, they're like, we're not changing. What advice do you have for them from a perspective of this journey of back to basics using cloud? I would like to paint a picture of them sitting on a beach in KZN or Mombasa or wherever they are in Africa, processing their payrolls, watching their business on a dashboard and understanding everything what's going on without them having to sit with this massive old general ledger or a desktop product watching the IT guys running around telling them <laughs> how much downtime they're going to have. So that's I what love I that. Them. I love that. An off piece question, a question you haven't been prepped for. If you were the host of this podcast, what question would you have liked him to have asked? As a fellow entrepreneur, do you drink your own champagne okay. or eat your own dog food? Yeah. And I would say I most definitely do. I use yeah. Sage Business Cloud Accounting and Payroll in my small side hustles, which is my brewery. And we've got a development program with bird seed where unemployed people actually sell bird seed bowls and feeders on the streets all over Gauteng. So I do use it to run my oh, own business. That's amazing. And what's the brewery's web address so we can place our orders? www.brewbay, B-R-E-W-B-A-Y.co.za. And that's everything to do with brewing. So that would be your coffee your spirits, your wines, and your beers. <laughs> you know, I know we're coming to the end of this. I have to just compliment the Sage team for having such a diverse bunch of sea levels As the VP for services for Sage Africa and Middle East, PJ, I imagine you're very keen to go and travel and to see your teams and see your partners and see your customers. We just want to wish you well from a tech central perspective, be safe, get out there, transform the continent because there's a lot of business to be done. Thank you for giving us a little bit of time on the Tech Central podcast. Now I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Daniel. And thank you for what you're doing for everyone in the tech space. That's appreciated. Have a lack of day. From me, Daniel Robus at the Tech Central podcast, we are signing off. Music.